Hi, my name is Manoj Basudevan. I'm a leadership coach. My claim to fame is I'm the world champion of public speaking. I'm also a professional speaker and author. I won the world championship in 2017. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm the best speaker in the world, but this was like an aspirational goal which uh, gave me focus and direction to work on my craft and get better as a speaker. The, the world championship winning speech, tell me about the process of writing it. Okay, so my process of writing competitive speeches is, um, of course, it, the speech has to be universal. That means anyone anywhere in the world should understand. As I said before, this is a competition involving uh, lots of people around the world, some 35,000 people from 142 countries. So the challenge is, how can you make your speech universal? Now, one way to make it universal is use your common sense. So you don't say things that will offend people. You have to be well read to understand what, what is going around in the world and um, what are people. Then, then of course there are some basic emotions everyone has. And second is you need to test your speeches and take feedback from people. So what I do is I have a form uh, which you can all download for free. It's called Arrow Form. Audience, response, reactions, objectives and wishes. So I asked them seven questions. It took me a lot of time to craft the right. Because the way you craft the questions, you get that kind of answer. So I've written like seven questions. I print out a form and give it to everybody in the audience and they will answer the questions. The questions could be something like, what do you like about my speech? How can I improve? What was my message of my speech? And the reason I ask them to write down is because if you ask people individually, they can't recollect. So I ask them to do right after my speech, two minutes spent to write down. And then I go home and evaluate the responses. And if I know my speech is universal, everybody gets the same message. Actually, there's a good question. Why do you take feedback from the audience? This is a philosophical answer. I believe you, a speaker, do not exist without the audience. The audience is what who makes you a speaker. Now, if you want to be the best speaker, you need to know what the audience wants, and so that you can tailor your what what you want to say to in a way, way and form they it appealing to them and resonates with them. And all of those feedback, all that feedback from a thousand people. Then, what did you do with that? So I do take feedback and my philosophy is I listen to all feedback but I make my own decisions, right? So sometimes people giving feedback may not know like the whole context or the philosophy or the thought process behind the speech. Actually the objective of the feedback is not to say what the audience wants to hear but actually to make sure what you want to say the audience gets it, right? So it's not to say that oh, I will tell you what you want to hear. Uh, that eliminates the element of authenticity as from you as a speaker because sometimes you have to say things people have never heard about before. If I summarize the entire public speaking in one equation, I will say what you say is not equal to what others understand. So you might say something that's not what people get or you may something people understand something else. So your objective, if you want to make sure people get exactly what you want, that's what the process of the arrow form. Arrow form just means it's to sharpen your messages. I'm fascinated by your, your approach to, to feedback. If you, if you wouldn't use the word feedback, what would you call it? If I don't use the word feedback, I would use it as a collaborative process of understanding to make sure you are understood. Here's, what, here's where I have a problem with the word feedback because it's like this, I have a message, I try it out, it doesn't work, someone gives me feedback. But that, that's not the end of the story, is it? Then you tweak the speech and deliver it again and now it works better. So feedback is only half of the solution. So actually the speech crafting, so I, I always say you don't never write a speech, you craft your speech, right? So you craft your speech and part of the crafting process, for example, you say something, the audience perceives something, it triggers a thought in their mind and they probably get an idea, they give it to you and now you take all those ideas, it kind of fuses into something bigger or better or different, right? Of course, then you take back the idea and if you were to try that st uh, story or uh, message again, you uh, send it out and again, it's an iterative process. It's an iterative process of uh, delivery, uh, listening, speaking and uh, also creating. Of course, the feedback is the breakfast of champions. Of course, there's a feedback and forth. But sometimes you need to know what feedback to take and what feedback not to take. So the objective of feedback is to collect it and have an overall framework of where you want, what you want to achieve with it and make sure it fits in or it kind of takes you in, cer in certain directions or there are feedback you will discard because it's not relevant for your context maybe it's for something else okay so how can we use that on, on, on any creative process now this this idea of getting feedback for a while uh, and then uh, like if it's just any idea so again in, in, in a general perspective in creativity when you have an idea you have to put it in front of the right group of people 
who will challenge your ideas then that makes you think in certain directions and then the more debate and deliberation discussion that goes on that idea that's what makes the idea better so ideas do not live in isolation when you have ideas you have to socialize that ideas get input and then listen to as many people as you can but make your own decision thank you very much <laughs>